is John Cullo with GrowingYourGreens.com to do another exciting episode for you. We just went down the street because I was hanging out with Josh, the boogie boy, and we went down the street to Monster Gardens, our favorite grow store here in Roner Park, who sells a variety of different, uh, you know, organic and non-organic, uh, you know, nutrients so you guys could grow the cannabis. That being said, as you guys know, Josh is really against the standard traditional hydroponic nutrients. So we're gonna show you guys in this episode a better way. And more importantly, Josh has been taking a lot of questions lately about from noobs that have never grown cannabis before. So if you're a noob, this is the video that you guys wanna to watch to learn how to upplant and transplant your cannabis seedlings to get them healthier, to not like plant them too early and not to make the noob mistakes that most people do. And we're gonna to talk to Josh about how to do things the best way so you guys have the best success growing your canvas or for that matter any other plant all right now we're walking into monster gardens and we got josh waiting for me on a mad monday so what's going on josh what's going on today is we're going to talk about how the pros know how to really grow and i'm talking about pros like my bros that work here at monster gardens themselves and they know as well as anyone the only dummies use Dedrians. <laughs> only, if you want to be a dummy, keep using the Dedrians. But Josh, why do most grow stores, I mean, not Monster, mm -hmm. have only Dedrians? They don't even have all the good options for people. Monster has by far the best natural selection. What I love about my bros at Monster is they're not afraid of telling you the truth. Because they're like me when I worked in a bike shop. You know why they work at Monster? You think they're here to get rich? They are here because they speak grow. It is their language, it is their culture, it is their hobby, and they love it. It is a labor of love for these guys. Now let me give you a clue. My bro Adam that works here, for instance, I just asked him for a little terpene trade because the best weed is different weed. And in as a respectful gesture, I brought back from my place right around the corner some of TD's best VCP, vanilla cream pie, VCP for the victory, right? After Adam, God bless him, bless Josh, another terpene junkie, with some, <laughs> thank you bro, <laughs> the ultimate new different blessing that's dedrient free. Now, what did he ask me when I brought him back some of TDs? Is it Shagram? He didn't ask me, oh, did you use, uh, you know, General Hydro ABC? Did you, oh, or what did you blow this shit up with? How, how, how many... How many chemotocracy's finest compounds are layering the frosting on here? He asked me, is it Shagram? This is what kind of connoisseur level hobby enthusiasts work at Monster Gardens. They care because he knows ultimately Shagram produces the finest terps. Unfortunately, no. TD likes to grow trees and it was full sun grown. But that's the kind of naturalis, dedrient free language they speak. And that's why. They try to offer things like earth juice right here. You walk into any other grocery store and it's a sea of chemotocracy's finest chemical crap. Thousand percent margin BS. And what does Monster show you? Well, they're still required to show you that. Why are they required to show you that? Because the big distributor, mafia-sized companies who control the Dedrian industry mandate that they still push their crap. But what does Monster do? Look at this. Yeah, you see the General Hydro, but what do you also see? You see the General Organics. You see what I mean? So these guys, they're trying to, they're here to help you, not hurt you, not hurt your pocketbook. They're trying to help you make intelligent, dedrian-free choices, growing naturalis, organically, with vitamin L, vitamin love. That's my whole point about what I'm trying to say. That the boys at Monster speak GYG -er language, sensible growing solution language. And that's why <clears throat> we're about to leave 
this sexy sea of plastic jugs, populated, unfortunately, yet still, by some of chemotocracy's finest crap, but mostly monster style with the natural living soil farmer's solutions. Most of what I see when I look on these shelves is good stuff that I would like to have if I was growing again and was in my garage. Pride Lands used to be Nature's Pride. Awesome local brand. Green Grow. And this guy's not getting rich. He's selling you sensible, one-stop shop, top dressing solutions that you scratch in at the appropriate time. The right time, it's all about timing. And just like Booty Brew does, when I get on the phone, when I talk to you about how to grow and how not to grow and timing and everything, the boys at Monster, they're here to help you, not to hurt your pocketbook. And they will gladly spend hours helping you figure out what to use and more importantly, what not to use. And it's just, that's why they're still here. Most of the grow store industry is going down in flames. Monster Gardens, they were one of the first companies to say, you know what? We're going to do it online. We're going to help people to make better decisions. And we're going to give them our own experience and our own guidance. And that's what I see when I come in here. I see experience. And yes, there's still... Um, mandated by the powers that be, as I said, by those big distributor companies to make everything look sexy and to sell you a bunch of name brand stuff. But you know what? They try so hard to offer you intelligent solutions. And that's what I see here dominating most of this space. Both, unfortunately, and yet still the liquid consciousness, which is a silly consciousness. Just like only dummies use dedrients. Only dummies purchase liquid products at 1,000% profit margins. And the horrible carbon footprint of a liquid product, no matter how natural its origins, when it comes wrapped in plastic and you're paying for water in 2023, uh-uh. But look what they show you. They have all the sensible dried scratch-in products. And now we're going to go outside leave the confines of their beautiful store. By the way, Boogie Brew's shown here too. Just wanted to give myself a little marketing attaboy. Not that I care. I mean, I am very grateful that they so prominently have placed my product on their store. They're not afraid to sell a local, honest, bulk granola, organic, sensible value. Most grow stores wouldn't touch it. You know why? It's too honest, Josh. That's what they've told me. Your product is too honest. Monster are all about honesty. They're proud to feature honest products. And speaking of which, we're going to go out into their parking lot, under their tarps, and we're going to look at their selection of soils. And Adam and Jim over here at Monster kindly also donated us the use of all the different size transplant containers. We're going to talk about those containers and when to put which soils in those containers and which time to do it at and how to monitor everything and do your transplant phases. We're going to try and put into a video the importance of transplanting at the right times with the right strength of soils. Now if you're unable to follow what I have to tell you, guess what? Your guys at Monster are here to help you too so you can give them a call, okay? And they'll coach you on the same choices the container size and the strength of soil you're using. Remember, most of the sensible products that I see here, including my own, these are just high octane fuel additives for the real horsepower, which we're about to show you, the biology that's lurking in their parking lot. Let's go take a look. Out here in their humble parking lot, it is January. They are moving a bunch of stuff around indoors. Normally, um, this stuff, this, this whole area would be hopping with a lot more activity. I can see in as little as two months time, guys pulling in 707 grow coders with their flatbed trucks, getting pallets of soil because the guys at Monster are, you know, in the off season even, ready to help their soil farming customers 
Um, so we have the benefit of being out here in the parking lot and having it all to ourselves. So great, have a chat with our self-esteem. This is awesome. We're out in Monster Garden's own parking lot showing off their biological wares that come to you in bags. And this is all you need to succeed. Um, and what we're going to talk about is when and how and where <laughs> the phases of using these. And that's the big eternal struggle for growers to master is uh, the transplant phases and the strengths of soil. So we're actually starting at the top here with a local soil proudly grown by the Green Grow Company who already make my favorite top dressing even though I don't even sell their top dressing but that's how transparent I am a product I don't even sell which I will tell you is the best and you can buy it from Monster Gardens and it's the Pride Lands um, top dressing that should be judiciously applied not over applied going to the 9-11 rules that we're going to talk about incessantly in a minute and which are also in a video John's done before with me and so they now have a potting soil which is just ballsy I gotta give Mark my bro that runs Green Grow some kudos for even attempting to produce a um, registered you know, formulated bagged product soil, which is a very competitive marketplace and is populated by a lot of crap and then um, some stuff that's not so bad and then some that's good, which can all be found at Monster Gardens. And, and I know Mark personally, and I know damn well, he wouldn't decide to launch a soil without it bearing the same uh, legacy, value, and, and uh, qualities that his top dressings are already known for. So I just, I don't know anything about this soil, but I just put in a quick question with my bros at Monster on the inside. And again, call them, they'll give you the lowdown. There are no commercial forest floor compost ingredient uh, products in here. Now what does that mean when you buy a normal potting soil whether it's at Home Depot or at your grow store and one of the very first ingredients listed is forest floor products. That can be a apparently a whole host of low grade to potentially high grade ingredients but it's basically a, a smorgasbord soup of leftover grinds from landscaping industries and from compost facilities and from the general like Caltrans when they're doing tree cleanup work and so on pool if you will of of wood chip recycled products so there could be a lot of good stuff in there like Ocean and Forest Mo uh, Fox Farm they originally owned their own peat bog that's from, you know, a, a forest floor uh, biodegraded product, so to speak, with ample with amounts of their own, you know, forest floor hummus, which is, could be world-class biology. However, Ocean and Forest, Fox Farm, have grown into this gargantuan-sized company since the 90s, and so it's no longer possible to be sure that you're getting world-class forest floor biology versus that soup of recycled products I was just discussing that can make their way into the general food chain of all commercial soil products. So my point about Pride Lands and the Green Grow is that Mark has steadfastly tried to avoid infecting his idea of what a super soil should be, um, which I haven't looked at the ingredients, but I know they're all going to be Great. Now, what? here's the lowdown on the guys at Monster. They said it comes low. Okay, here we go. Of okay, great. So it's a cocoa-based soil. In general, cocoa peat versus forest floor um, peat, although peat hummus is also in here. They, they both display different qualities, but the good news is cocoa is supreme for retaining beneficial aerobic organisms and those valuable BSF bacterial surface um, area, colonization, microporous spaces. Cocoa reigns supreme for allowing the beneficial microbes for colonizing, basically. 
And then we go to the, the peat moss, the peat hummus. Um, and then he's got some lime. Okay, it's very clean. He's got some um, recycled ocean, some oyster shell. Okay, then we're getting into, we do have feather meal. Yeah, that's questionable, okay, because we're talking factory farmed. This isn't going to be in all of the super soils, unfortunately. But then you have your fish meal, your guano, alfalfa, okay. Everything else besides the feather meal, he gets an attaboy. Very clean and Blood green. meal, Josh? That's Wait, an attaboy? Blood no, no, no blood, no blood meal, bro. That's not a cool. Yeah. Well, so that just shows you, no, ma no matter how hard you try when you buy a bagged product, unfortunately, and, and you know, I really like this company. They're more professional than Boogie Brew could ever hope to be. And their, their, their uh, mycorrhizal products are world class. So, <clears throat> anyway, there's room for improvement, but it's as good as it gets compared to all the stuff you've seen me rant about, like in our Home Depot of it, um, Dr. Earth episode, all right? Still a very clean product. Un unfortunately, still tainted by a little bit of our um, factory farm slaughterhouse byproduct ingredients. So even, not even Steve Cantwell would buy this. However, compared to growing with dedrients and using commercial soils, this is about as good as it gets. This is a super soil. Okay, then we have another cocoa paste uh, super soil blend, similar ingredients, great worm castings in this one. Quality control, I'm not so keen on. They've had issues where um, root aphids have infected this brand before. We're talking 10 years ago. No, I don't mean to be accused of libel, but it, it common knowledge that they got pretty big. And unfortunately, that pool of ingredients I keep describing, whether it's the recycled um, forest floor compost um, or, uh, you know, animal slaughterhouse ingredients and so on. Um, one of the agents that's used in a lot of the big soil brands is going to be from the um, for what they're allowed to call compost which is going to be from believe it or not factory farmed cattle and that's where some of our biggest root aphid infestation issues have happened on the west coast from the central valley and the evil factory slaughterhouse farmed cattle facilities that exist down where you can see them when you drive on highway 5 down towards bakersfield it's huge facilities. What are they going to do with all that stuff? Oh, you know, we'll sell it to soil companies and they can repackage it into their sexy bags. So keep in mind that when you get into the bigger brands, you're now also tempting fate with where that pool of ingredients have come from that I was just bragging to you about. Mark at, at uh, Green Grow and Nature's Pride, aka Pride Lands brand, are doing everything they can to minimize that generalized pool of polluted crap getting into your soil supply and causing you problems like root aphids. It has been known to happen back in the day. However, they fixed it, still a great brand, still promoting organics and living soil, and still a win, and still a very strong soil. This one, by the way, um, comes with about a four week supply of his world famous Pride Lands world's best top dressing. Therefore, in theory, you will be able to put these at the right timing that we're all about to talk about. Um, you may get four whole weeks in the flower without adding any top dressing goodies. May or may not. That's a big maybe. We'll talk all about that in a minute. Now, we go straight to mild, my favorite, intermediate, good old happy frog. The boys at Monster have informed me that, you know what, it's not the happy frog it used to be. It's questionable with its quality. However, it's still a solid middle of the road, and by mid, I mean midway veg in the flower. Comes loaded with the mycorrhizae. Um, a great value. You still you know, fox farm for the money, you know, and the size that they've gotten. You know what? 
even though they sold out to the Dedrian Devils and they, they've got this horrific line like Kaching and um, uh, it just research their dry chemical based um, fortifiers that they sell which are horrible which is enough to piss off the Pope because why they ever did that I don't know because back in the 90s when I grew their O&F their ocean and forest soil was the best and in most parts of the country unfortunately is still your best choice for a full term super soil and overall out of you know, 100% of the food chain of the ONF soil that's now sold and produced, by the way, in different regional facilities, depending on which part of the country you buy it in now, um, it still scores a 90% satisfaction rating at giving your plants the horsepower that they need to succeed um, deep in the flower without any additional fortification. It's still a win after all these years. It is not what it used to be. It doesn't pack the numbers crunch. It, do, it used to come out at 2100, 2200 pots per million when you would test the runoff with a PPM pen. We're practicing the 911 rules we're gonna talk about in a sec. But it's still in the upper teens and that was arguably too strong for people who didn't understand about when to use these kind of soils. However, some of its qualities have suffered. It's not all produced. From what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, Fox Farm, but it is not. All of its biological origins are no longer just from Humboldt County and the unique peat bog that they had that gave them the base, so to speak, the hummus, that has always been the best quality in this soil. Like I said, it's not as good as it used to be, but it's still better than most of the garbage you're gonna find in the mainstream hardware store, nursery store, soil vendor facilities nationwide. If you ask for Fox Farm Ocean and Forest, if you ask for Happy Frog, there's still a winning combination, and that's why Monster Gardens continues to promote it. But the boys in the office will tell you some good alternatives out there. Now, I'm going to walk over here, show off some real basics. And this is a what? The most important part, as I show you, guess what? This is where actually everything happens, right here. So we have 100% washed, some great quality. I'm sure the guys at Monster wouldn't sell it to you unless they knew it was a good salt-free cocoa peat media and you can start your plants in just this with maybe a little perlite maybe not depending how often you want to water or not in the early phases but of course good old ready grow it's aeration ready formula ready to be you can't possibly overwater this stuff you could drench your starts in this with water all day long and they still have enough oxygen um, to succeed. So these are the basics. Then we're getting into the higher horsepower tempered with the mid-range and then a couple of brands that offer you super soil level high horsepower rich soil that will still need additives, will still need top dressings. All right, so this is all about timing and these bags give you all the horsepower you need to succeed at those various times. Now, let's talk about the, the boring looking, but oh so important, structural sizing. All right, Josh, so we just learned about the soil. Now you can see we have all these different sized pots. Now, Josh, yeah. why do we have pots to grow pot? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the pots, and I don't care if it's garlic or the best ganja on the planet. If you want your plants to dance and you want your weed to succeed then the baby phases the nursery phases just like you and I as babies being raised by responsible parents feeding us healthy young food it's all about I mean th this is the most important part of growing bro but nobody talks about it hardly nobody talks about it and I get so sick of 
of answering emails and text messages. I mean, I love all my customers to pieces. You're the only reason I'm still in business. The emotional reward that GYGers, your audience, provides me. And, and I'm very appreciative, but nonetheless, I, I get really exhausted with asking people the same questions and trying to decipher those early phases and, and where they you have jumped the gun with going into too big of a pot to begin with, with too rich of a soil to begin with, or any combination of those factors. So Josh, I can't have a like, little clone in this pot. Right. And then I could just be like, oh, all I need to do is put it right into this pot, right. a little small clone. Why, why shouldn't I do that, man? It seems like, why do I have to buy all these intermediate pots and waste my time? And, 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 and what would you put, by the way, into that pot right away? What, you know what I mean? Like if you're just Joe Blow off the street, and that's the thing, like you go into Home Depot and they don't educate you on, okay, this is what you start your nursery girls into, and this is what you progressively put them into, and, and how many of their employees, their staff, Really have, grow have, stuff. Have, have, right, really <laughs> grow and have the experience to tell you so, right? They're just going to sell you whatever's on a sexy marketing label. And, and everybody, you're just left, up, you're left with this, like, guessing game. And by the way, that's still too big. You start with this. <laughs> you start with this, bro. You start small. Even clones, dude. Yeah, no, clones, cubes. You, you start out with those cubes and you keep them in that cube-sized um, containerized space. John for as, as long as you can like you're starving that child you want that baby to become concular as she's looking with new roots all the time for foods that you're not even able to give her because you're limited to this tiny space and you want to be maybe watering as much as two or three times a day now that would be an ideal situation and I'm not trying to bully people into being that enslaved to your plants that you're forced to sit there for the first 10 days as you grow them in this size of cube of this mild of a soil. You know what I mean? But that is the most ideal situation is to get them just starving with roots just popping out of the bottom of these things. It's because you want you want them to make it like, you want them to stress out a little bit, right? And then they, they, they're like itching. They're like, right, move you, me up, man. Like, uh, you know. <laughs> you, you want them to want. Yeah. You want them wanting more. And it's a delicate dancing game of how much can I push these girls. Before it's over the edge. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, and every crop is different. Every environment is different. And every, you're going to make some mistakes. We're all, and. It's all right. Yeah, That's I'm, how you learn. Right, exactly. So and have backups. <laughs> all I know is after 10 years of growing, myself for a living cannabis these are the methods that i realized would allow me to succeed using a less is more approach milder soils gradually going into the stronger soils and along the way asking my plants to really work hard to give me more for less that i was giving them but then every time you go into these bigger containers real magic happens so Josh, when you go into the bigger containers? You go into the bigger containers when the plant tells you to. So you might have a week to 10 days that you've literally grown in say cocoa peat only or the ready mix, which is as mild as cocoa peat, just barely fortified into a, a nutrient less media, what, what can also be sold to you as a soil less media, cocoa peat and perlite, right? Um, where they're not getting anything at all besides the nutrients that are within the plant's own cellular sub substructural system. Maybe a little pure protein if you spray, if they're clones and you want them to root faster or seeds they're going to pop faster and that won't burn them even though it's an ultra rich form of nitrogen. So a little pure protein sprayed on them in the mildest soil possible in little tiny one inch two inch cubicle sized root space structure for as long as possible eight well not as long as possible no more than 10 days max but about a week and then what what are the signs that it should be moved up oh as, it's, as soon it's as possible. those signs of the the plant being hungry for more would of course be in the root zone itself mad white that's why i keep my hands down here this 
you know, I'm trying to psychically create these cuncular, strong, white, fibrous root structures that are popping out of the bottom and that are taking it over. Also, another sign is it's going to have so much root in that small of a pot, in that small of a container, I mean, or thimble full size, whatever it's got, it's media. The root is going to be more than the media. And so they're going to need watering all the time. So if you start out with two times a day of needing to rehydrate them, which is a great thing, the more you get to rehydrate it, the better. You definitely don't want to leave it wet. If it's wet, if it stays wet for more than 24 hours, you've got big problems in this phase. You want it running dry, all right? So when it's at the point where it's like, my God, I'm having to water them three, four, five times a day, they're definitely telling you to go into the next size. It's a feel-based thing. I'm asking your viewers, John, to be what you already are and what I barely am in spite of <laughs> sounding like I know what I'm talking about, a FBF, a feel-based farmer. This is feel-based. When you get the feeling, okay, and also a visual shine is the, the new growth will still be green, but whatever old growth is on there will start to really yellow. Uh, they can't support the old growth because it's right. just being it, starved it, it's out. You, it's using its own pl plant nutrient you know, reservoir. Reserves. Right, reserves, exactly. And so if you see older growth, lower leaves turning yellow, new growth that's popping out lime green and healthy, and, and that's perfect with lots of root structure coming out of the bottom and never overwatered along the way, like pushed dry. You can teach a plant from its earliest days yeah. to run dry, and you really want to do that, especially with cannabis, because we're here at Monster. I know this is mostly for us weed necks. <laughs> and most of the cannabis strains are Afghani water pumps, as Super Seth likes to call them. Um, and our uh, a genus, uh, cannabis in general, is a genus of plant that likes to run dry. It's better to dehydrate it a bit more than, definitely way better than overwatering it. I've never heard of a strain of cannabis that likes being, like sitting in water all the time. All right, Josh, so once you get out of this size, what size do you go into? Do you go into like a one gallon or you go into one of these like four inches? And, yeah. You know, why do, you, why do we have square and circular pots? Like which ones do you like better? You know, the jury's out on that. Um, circular, I did read of a study in the 90s they did where they invented a pot that was narrower up here and wider up here, wider at the bottom, which actually makes a lot of sense in nature when a plant goes down into the soil, it's got plenty of vertical real, horizontal real estate as much as it has vertical. Why has mankind invented all these nursery pots that, you know what I mean, shrink a plant's root system? And therefore, you could argue that's why the popularity of what we're not showing here, your um, root air pots, your air pots, your, what is it, your fabric pots, your, root pruning, root pruning pots that encourage more horizontal growth. Um, so I guess in that regard, I'd rate a square-shaped pot superior. Oh, uh, wait, there's a smaller one, right? Yeah. So, wait, wasn't there one even smaller? <laughs> so we're getting, uh, you know, this is just shows you how OCD I am. Let's lay them all out here. Look at this. Like, how many choices can you get, John? What would you do? I like the square pots personally because I, I mean it's just easier to deal with and I mean I don't know I just well, like because they could they could fit easier when you're growing them right, like, right. more efficiently for <laughs> trays for moving around right, exactly and this, with these with the you're still thinking about your greater numbers and you're not necessarily at the point where the actual resulting crop like there's still going to be some stray soldiers that yep. you get rid of right so always grow more than you need to succeed yep. Even with cannabis, where I know you're limited in most jurisdictions um, where it's not fully legal yet, or even where it is fully legal recreationally, they still limit the hobby growers' numbers that can be grown. And certainly in, in more like quasi-legal, in medical-only legal um, jurisdictions, they say, oh, you know, you can grow um, 12 transplants, 12 nursery, and then six final trees six final but um, I've never heard of anyone getting busted for 
I mean, if you keep it to 99. But of you know, course, consult a lawyer. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I'm just saying, in those early phases, don't be shy of growing more than you initially need to succeed. One of the biggest. Um, it's a numbers uh, game. Yeah, it's a numbers game. And the, one of the things I get all the time is oh, I started my six girls, Josh. Can you help me? A couple of them are really struggling. It's like, oh, Should have had extras. Yeah, why didn't you start with more than you need? Just like I got lucky last year to get TD's leftover trees, right? The ones that weren't going to be rejects. his tree. Right, his rejects, right? I, yeah. So someone, you know, someone can be as obsessed with growing the best as TD and have an 8 out of 10 variety that still doesn't cut it for them. But right. still killer for somebody else. Right, right. So then you get, you know, there's always someone who will take your leftovers if they're not just straight rejects. Um, now, what size would you go th if you started out in a flat? Okay, let's forget about weed. Let's just say radishes. What would you then? Radishes, I wouldn't even, I would have put directly in the ground. <laughs> okay, ground. Okay, so not a ground cover crop like garlic. Tomatoes, say tomatoes. Okay, a tomato. What would you go to? Well, if I was in a six pack, man, I'd go to a four inch. You wouldn't even bother with the two. Nah, that, I, I'm wasting my time, man. I don't have that much time. But, 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 but see, to me, tomatoes aren't as valuable as cannabis. Right, and if it was indoors. And if I only had six plants, then I'd probably go every little step that I needed to. And if you're wanting to give yourself a greater number of nursery stages. Do so, you want to go slowly? Because I look at this and I see two weeks, three weeks even. After my little whatever clone size cubicle, I see two to three weeks of veg doable in some wow. like this. Two weeks. I wouldn't waste my time. I get oh. rid of pots that size. Then you so you'd go. <laughs> but right, I don't grow cannabis either. Right. Uh, but again, every situation is different. You know what I mean? So yep. do you need a pot this size? Only you can figure that out. For me personally, I'm a bit OCD about all the nursery phases. Finally giving me the 24 legal plants or the 12 legal or 6 legal, whatever it is, um, you know, for bloom phase. And so the, the greater numbers I can do early on and the... Then weed them out. Weed them out along the way. Exactly. You're like, oh, this one's a freaking dud. Give it to my friend Joe. Amen. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. You just helped and me then, And then, that move out. It, then you move up a few less. Right. So you exactly. don't got to keep moving up all the ones. No, all right. I but, got it. But then this into here... It's yeah. not much, man. Right. So you would maybe go this into this. Ah. And then this one would go... You see what I mean? I see. So we're not saying... You hey, have the, to use every single one. Right. We're not saying you need to use every single one. Exactly. We're saying use two or three of these, depending on what you, you know. And again, if this is sitting in water for more than 24 hours, not good, right? If you water this and it's still wet more than a day later, you've overwatered it. Or you this moved phase. up too quickly. Or you, or you moved it up, very unlikely, because you get it out of this into this. But let's say you're going from this into this, exactly. You want. See, you're feeling it already. You're an FBF or you're a field based farmer. You moved it up too quickly. It wasn't quite. Filled out dry. enough. What you wanted this one to be drying out a lot before you then get it into here. Now, of course, initially, she'll only need water in here for a day. You know, for what, once a day, I mean. But pretty soon, she's going to want it twice a day. When she gets to where she wants it three times a day, and you see the white tips coming out of the bottom. It's time. It's time, exactly. So, Josh, let's talk about soil. We talked about when to move it up, but right. as you move up, do you still keep using the weak-ass soil, or do you start using some other soils to try to get some nutrients in there? There's the secret sauce. And, and which one do you do when? And, you know, it, we're asking you for your feedback, too. This is not my bully boogie bully boy <laughs> trying to tell you you know you need to use this at this phase and this at that phase but it should clearly be a sensible choice of milder less is more making them look for natural nutrients until when until they get hungry enough and you see some of that what was a week or two ago still green and healthy what's now becoming Older growth, as newer green growth is forming above it, and that's getting real um, yellow. And then also, another big thing to look for is gonna be the um, thickness of the stalk, right? 
and how cunk what I use the word cunkula, how cunky she is, how sturdy. If that stalk is still wimpy and, and, and flippy floppy, you need to let her firm up, right? You've probably been over watering her, she hasn't been in this container long enough, umpteen reasons. You want to get her cunkular and sturdy and strong. And then she goes into the next one. And what goes into each, you tell us. But we know it's going to be stronger than what you started them out in. Just like a baby. Starts out on the mildest foods. Gradually can be exposed to superfoods like honey along the way. You just have to be smart about it. And not just go, oh, well, Master Mark soil. Okay, I'm going to take something that comes out of a one-inch cube and put it into a... 20-gallon <laughs> pot with Master Mark soil and expect to succeed? I mean, no, man, you need to, You haven't stretched it out. You haven't gone through the process, man, it, to like, you know. It, and that's the thing. And everybody does it differently. Like, I was shocked that TD, he pretty much goes straight from this into the ground, into Master Mark's. But he has more than he needs to succeed along the way. And by the point where he's at ready to put him into something that I personally don't think they can handle just yet. They're already like ballsy baby trees. But and he, he selected the best yeah, ones he and the selected best the varieties best and, and he's not afraid to even lose one along the way. Because he has a couple of spares. He still has a couple of spares, even when he's going into his biggest holes. And he's like, you know what? If she don't make it, if she can't handle the stress of going from a mild mix into a strong soil, and still in March or April, whenever it was he did it, I was shocked. We'll have to go ask Seth to edit this and look at the TD footage that's in a magical TD vault we have and show us like when he did that, when he went from a phase, I wouldn't dream of putting him into such a big So I mean, hole. if you're a master grower, you could do that, but for the most of us, Josh, how many times I, would, I would you move up until you get into like a, a 20, 20 more, 25 the, gallon? The more, the merrier. The more, um, grow tents with mild LED lights and whatever you're, the, the most amount of infrastructure that you can invest in for veg for these phases with the progressively stronger transplant mixes, guess what? The better your final bloom room will do for you or bloom garden tree space in TD's case. So, there are no hard, fast, steady rules. Everyone's different. Some people, some of you have one grow tent and you get a tray of clones. Well, you're gonna have a veg period. So at least make a ladder, make a double decker of that grow tent and have some that are, you know, maybe in one gallons as your main veg, but beneath them, you've got those backups under one little low level LED light bar in these, you know what I mean? And and you've timed it. You still have that early phase batch of girls ready to be the next phase for you. It's all about timing. That's the title of this video. Timing is everything. Timing, transplanting, T and T. Timing and transplanting, timing of transplanting. That's what this is all about. All right, Joshua, we're running short on time today, so tell, tell us about some of the products we have here. So we have the Mycos, so should people use the Mycos every time they uproot or just the first time? Every time. Every time. Every time there's a new hole in the ground, a new hole in one of your magical transplant, ideally at least three in veg before your super soil bloom phase. Every time you've created a hole that a healthy transplant with big white roots begging for more are going into. You sprinkle some of the mycorrhizae in there. Another valuable tool along the way that you can't live without, my favorite parts, Pamillion Pen, the Blue Lab Truncheon. You're gonna measure whatever runoff you get. You want whatever the numbers are at. Early on in the mild mixed soils, a few hundred parts per million. As you go to the 50-50 blends, of your seedling or soilless mix, cocoa pea and perlite mixes, blended with happy frog. And as you go into all the way to ocean and forest, 707 Pride Lands grade, 
soils, you want to see stronger numbers coming out of the bottom. If you're in a situation where you're watering and you don't have any runoff coming out of the bottom, no problem. Scoop a little bit of the soil, put it in a shot glass, measure with the water in there. You know, put some water in the shot glass, a little bit of soil, measure it. You want those numbers to always be gradually coming down. If they're going up, you're too strong. You've started out with a soil that's too strong, you've locked them up. Or you've transplanted them into a soil that's too strong and you've locked them up. Or you've listened to some grow uh, company's propaganda and you're feeding them dedrients, God forbid, in veg that they don't even remotely need. Along the way, if you've transplanted every phase right into progressively stronger soils, you won't need to give them anything else. But there are some valuable um, you know, supplements you can give them in veg. Pride Lands has a veg right here. I love Pride Lands, best top dressing company on the planet. Another one, Geoflora. No crappy, some of these are organic based, but they still have dedrians in them, but these don't, especially this one. So if they need anything in veg, if the PPMs are coming out low, but they still are only a few days in, and you're like, oh wow, the soil I put them into is not actually strong enough. They're so greedy. They're so hungry. They're using Feed more. Them a little bit more. You could, you could exactly just scratch bit. in a little bit, or you can cheat and give them pure protein and boogie routine, which will definitely bridge any nutritional gaps that may or may not. In general, less is more. You want to starve them. You want them hungry for more. You want the PPMs to be coming out lower. We don't have time to get into this. He's done a much better, more video in-depth video about this with me. But this is a valuable tool to use along the way, a parts per million pen, from the early phases and certainly into bloom. All right, Josh, so we talked about the soils and all the different pots, moving it up and then feeding a little bit, measuring it with the truncheon stick. Let's talk about going into the main growth stage now. What's different and what's going on? Do you still move it up to bigger sizes or what? You still, yeah, everything's different. Now your plants are ready to dance. They're on the big boy game. They're playing their best for you. You've weeded out, unfortunately, some stray soldiers along the way that have gone into the compost pile, okay? You've gone through your progressively stronger mixes. If there's been a situation where, the, and by the way, when they're in one of these, they can go two, three, four weeks, you know, in a one gallon. But again, you know, are you growing indoors or are you growing out? If you're growing indoors, I wouldn't veg in something as big as this. I would veg in something maybe as big as these. And then you're going to grow your final indoor in a tent crop in something as big as this. This five gallon underneath all these. But of course for outdoor, this is the minimum size. Or if you have an, a tent which has sufficient vertical real estate, and the LED light that allows you to grow really close to it, you could still grow indoors in a container as big as this. Bigger is better. Along the way, they've gotten hungry, they're begging you for more each time, you've gotten as much as, as little as, as, as a week um, to a 10 day, two week period in something this size before they in insist that you grow them now into this size. Now you're into these sizes, you could get as much as a month out of these. And, and certainly a month in veg with these milder mixes, yeah, they're gonna want a little extra top dressing, a little extra pure protein, a little extra strong compost tea or boogie brew tea, whatever tea you wanna use, all right? They're, no matter what, you want those numbers to always be coming down. If they're going up, flush, baby, flush. Feed them water, get those numbers to come down a bit. And then, um, when they come down a bit, now you can recharge them with some fresh tea and maybe even a little extra top dress. It's such a game. It's such a delicate dance. It really is. Okay, we're going into the big boy phase now. We've got our big, whether it's in TD's case, for a 10 foot tall tree, you know, a, a massive 200 gallon hole in the ground. Or, you know, if you're more limited in a greenhouse or in an indoor situation where something as big as this is, can be used, um, then what is this, about a 20 gallon size. That's still, in my humble opinion, not enough to furnish the plants with everything they need to succeed in bloom. Granted, at this point, you've got them into a super soil. 
you've got them into like the best of the best that pride land stuff over there we talked about which has about a give or take four week supply of goodies built into it there's still probably ideally actually not just probably if you've done everything right to this point and you've pushed them along the way all those timing phases they're still gonna be hungry you always want your plants hungry always so what do you give them now they're in their super soil and no more transplants what do you do composting <laughs> and what else nutrients and where do you get those nutrients organically right <laughs> from as sensible of a source as possible using a sensibly priced top dressing which again we're going pride straight lands. pride lands like nature's pride don't even sell their products but i just None of this is about bullying people into you into buying Boogie Brew and my products. You know, I sell Rainbow Mix, and that's a good, cost-effective top dressing. And part of our Bloom package, which is an unbelievable deal, blah blah blah. More bang for your buck, but if even bang for your buck, this is still great. You know, this isn't just Rolls Royce level. This is a really good quality, but it's still not vegan, and we we're going to actually work on a. Um, Steve Campbell approved approach for 2024. So stay tuned for some really high powered, boogie formulated top dressing mixes in bloom that don't have even a little of those animal slaughterhouse byproducts in cool. them. So this one, and then you've also got, I noticed Monster has this. Since we're here in Monster's parking lot, I asked him and we checked, I checked with Adam. This does not have any dedrians in it. Geoflora, Omri listed, and CDFA, so pretty hard to go wrong with this. And again, this would only be applied to your super soil in bloom once or twice during that 6, 8, 10, 12 week bloom cycle. And only when this, low. when this number gives you a lower number, when the numbers really stop to drop, start to drop. Now, like I said, we call it the 9-11 rule. Simple. You wait for the runoff. Again, if, there's an, if you can't get any runoff, you scoop a bit of soil into a shot glass and measure that. When those numbers dip, in our case, overall, around 1,100 pots per million is when we would then make the choice to wisely feed up to another nine. And that way, the next time you measure any runoff, no matter what, it's not going to come out too strong. It's not going to come out above 2,000 ppms. Now you mentioned compost tea. I'm pushing these kind of ingredients. However, my tea or any tea, your own open source workhorse, refer to the workhorse Yeah, link tea. down below for that. Workhorse tea will activate these. They'll make it even better. Right. They will activate these ingredients. And generally, when this thing is alerting you, Hey, the numbers are coming out low. When the plants are telling you, feed me, the soil's not strong enough anymore, and you scratch in some top dressing, instead of using an instantly available Chemotocracy's finest Dedrian crap brand, right? If you want that stuff to melt into that bio kingdom. Be in, absorbed faster. Right, to be exactly. We're not what we eat, we're what we absorb. When we're really hungry, we need all the absorption help we can get. That's when I'm going to shamelessly plug my product, Boogie Brew, but I'm also going to tell you, please don't let me be the boogie bully that's saying you have to use this. Even a simple oh, a worm good work tea, horse tea, a good like work horse tea, exactly. A good you need any kind tea. of tea to activate, right, and get those absorbed quicker, so your growth right. can be healthier and happier and produce more. Exactly. And guess what? The next time, a, a day or two later, when you get some runoff, or if you don't get runoff, when you just want to scoop the soil and get the PPM test, those numbers will have bounced up into the high teens where you want them to be. At the most, if you've done it all right, timing is everything, with the progressively stronger mixes, and about a week before flower, put them finally into their super soil kingdom home. At the most, you're only going to need to apply a supplementary bloom-specific top dressing two times. Two times, that's it. 
If you find yourself that bag should last like a long well exactly. depends on how many girls you got. Exactly. No, a the, long the, time. The, these are incredibly cost effective products. And they become more cost effective when, when you, you activate, activate them. them with a T. Now what do you see here? You see some plastic pots, some plastic bags, paper bag in this, but you don't see any liquid plastic jug dedrian. You see all sensible dry solutions. Powders, not chipping water. You, exactly. And these pots are reusable and recycle the bags. And it's cost you pennies. And your plants have had everything they need to succeed along the way. And nothing they don't. Which is a bunch of the chemotocracy's Dedrian garbage. Don't be a dummy. Don't buy marketing. Don't use Dedrians. Do use soils intelligently. The best you can source locally at the best possible price. If your grow store can get some of these at a good price for you, demand that they give you these kind of solutions instead of the Dedrian crap that they're pushing on their shelves. And use these things intelligently. And guess what? The super soil, Steve Cantwell, what, is he t what did he say? 13, 15 times, like more than 10 times. Reusing the soil. Reusing it and getting a better yield each time. time. And all he's doing is fortifying it along the way a little bit with stuff that's even better quality. And more importantly, stressing his girls out as he moves them up. As he moves Very them up. Very important. When you finally visit Super Steve C in Nevada near to you, and go over these things. This will all be just for him. <laughs> he speaks this language. Like uh, I'm telling you, like the living soil movement is alive and well, and um, it's more about what you don't do yep. than what you do. This is do. not even complicated. You get a couple of things, a couple of bags of stuff. You move them up. Pay attention to your you, girls. You move them up. You, it's all about those graduated phases. It really is. And you know, paying attention to your girls. You know, John, you're right. It really isn't complicated. It's simple. It's being a field based It seems farmer. like a lot easier than all those stupid chemicals and measuring your pH and pH up, pH down, all this crap. And feeding <laughs> when the Dedrian company tells you to feed. Versus when the girls are telling you and the, exactly. the truncheon meters telling exactly. you. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I mean, what is complicated is how we humans. You know what I mean? Well, we have to think doing it this way. You have to think like, oh, my root's good enough. You got to start learning, guys. But, no shortcuts in life. Yeah, so what complicates things is when you don't think <laughs> and you blindly follow. No, that's the, what people want to do. Right, they just want to blindly they, follow the, right, the recipe. Whatever the Dedrian industry <laughs> sells you. We're being taught not to think in our society. Right. <laughs> yeah, be, be, a, be a critical thinker, be an FBFer, a field based farmer. Think critically about what your plants need to succeed and not what the marketing company idiots try to bully you. It's simple, using. guys. It really it's simple. is. It so, is. Josh, I got to leave, but any final comments you'd like to share my viewers today before we sign off? I'd like to thank you for hosting me here, and I'd like to thank Monster Gardens for allowing this on a day they're moving inventory in the off-season. It's a mad Monday. I'm supposed to be shipping orders. Yeah, and I'm supposed to be catching a flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but you know what? This, this is, was worth it. This is so worth it. We want you guys to grow the best we, organically, we you know, and yeah. have the best yields. And whether you're growing cannabis or even other vegetables, a lot of these same techniques if, apply. If you apply the, all these techniques that are foolproof, are stoner proof <laughs> for growing really good ganja, if you apply this general... Um, Rules. Rules, right. Thank you. The, the general principles to all gardening, you will succeed. You really will. All right, Josh. Well, thank you so much. I got to run, but hope you guys learned a lot in this episode. If you guys want more in-depth episodes with Josh, hey, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. More importantly, share this with other people Just that this video could get a lot of views so we could get people off the Dedrians get people to think more, think about their girls more, take care of the girls' needs so that they can benefit more from higher quality and uh, you know much more quantity than they've ever grown before. Also support Monster Gardens, their link is down below. Also their YouTube channel, they've been making YouTube videos forever now, so check them out. They're a wealth of information. Don't be scared to call them up. I'll put their phone number down below. They're experts there that work at Monster and they're there to help you get you the right uh, products and of course they sell all the products that we've shown today. Monster are amazing. They really are. I can 
I've said it so many times, they've done the industry so many more favors. They really have. Just by being here as an institution, as a group of guys that are here to help you and not hurt your pocketbooks. You know, they've done, along the way, they've done the industry a lot of favors, including their neighbors at Boogie Brew. Wonderful, yeah. Josh. Yeah. So also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new upcoming episodes of Commander every five to seven days. You don't know sure where I'll show up or what you be learning or what next interview I'll be having with Josh one of these days coming up soon. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as many videos go out. And finally, be sure to share past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 1,800 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to teach you guys all about how to grow your own best fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs, including cannabis <laughs> at your own home. So with that, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing.